A very good morning and welcome. You're still listening to the program Miraya Breakfast Show with me, Sebit William. And now it's my, our special honor today to introduce to you former president of Botswana and now chairperson of the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, JMEX, Dr. Festo Mogaya, here with us in the studios of Miraya Breakfast Show. So we can look at the challenges and the progress that has been made so far in the implementation process of the peace agreement. Your Excellency, you're most welcome to the program Mira breakfast show this morning. Thank you. Good to have you. Let's begin <clears throat> right away. In your own words this morning, how will you describe the progress so far made in the implementation of the peace agreement? Modest. Some progress has been made, is been made, but it's still very modest and delicate. Great. Now, yesterday in your presentation on Tuesday, you underscored that the only offensive South Sudan needs right now is a peace offensive. I want you to explain for us briefly on that. What did you mean by this? I meant that the, the leadership of the country, the president, the first vice president, the vice president, and all members of the transitional government of nation and unity must go out and breach peace. They should engage all citizens um, uh, and invite them to join them in, in the peace effort. Uh, I think there is too much negativity taking place, much good news, I mean bad news uh, taking place of fighting here, fighting in Equatoria, in the north, in the south, everywhere. Some of them are clashes between the I.O. Um, and, and, the, uh, and the government. Others are said to be clashes from un, un, unknown groups. Yeah, those are those are bad news. Now, in our peacemaking, the government and us must go out and be talking peace, inviting people. The president once made a statement that we should not be thinking of revenge. I want to hear that statement be made often by the leaders, not only the president, but the other leaders, because otherwise we are surrendering to inflammatory rhetoric, which could result in even more fighting, even more hatred. Uh, so, so that's why I mean by saying, instead of, of uh, a military offensive against this group or not that group, I'm not saying that the state should not defend itself, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that instead of saying we're going to launch an offensive against this wing and against that group, one of the offensives should be calling on these people to live fighting, to live killing, and lay down their arms, and that they will be received by the government as a whole. You, you also rightly noted that the people of South Sudan looks to JAMEX and the international community to resolve the differences that will end this conflict and bring about a real prospect of peaceful and sustainable national development. Why is peace still, still an illusion up to now in South Sudan, like total peace, really? Well, precisely, uh, precisely, that's why I'm anxious that uh, every man of good, every man and woman of goodwill should be involved in peacemaking because this country and this community doesn't seem to have known peace in the last two, three years. And, and so we have to do something to try and reverse this trend mm -hmm. where people uh, who fought for a long time as a nation and with uh, a lot of goodwill from the international community has now appeared to be falling apart. That should not be allowed to happen. And um, if, if fighting and um, clashes are taking place and we are silent as leaders, it will appear as if we are accepting that that, that situation uh, should continue. What I'm saying is that, no, we shouldn't do that. The president, as the head of state and, and the father of the nation, he, above all, should be heard, regretting. If he expressing anger, he should be regretting the clashes that are taking place. But the next thing would be uh, inviting South Sudan is to remember that they are one people, that they have lived together before they can live together again, that they should lay down their weapons um, and join each other, work for the development of their country instead of always planning how to kill each other. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that more often he should make these statements frequently. But also 
all the leaders, all members of the government of nation and unity, they should be calling for their for, for peace and forgiveness. Yes. Earlier in the beginning of our interview, you described. But also, it. yes. But also, I think that they should be giving civil society m more space. They should include women. Mm -hmm. Women are a peace people. They they want peace much more than the men. Because in any case, the people who are doing the fighting and killing is, is not the women. It's, it's the men. And therefore, that, that's why I think we as JMEC, mm -hmm. but the government of national unity, uh, should include more women, should be allowed to engage women. Yes. What is making your work as, as JMEC difficult at the moment in really implementing the peace agreement as it is? It's the willingness of the parties to stop fighting. I have complained before that the South Sudanese, especially the, the government at the I.O., were less willing to, to accommodate each other politically through compromise. They seem to be bent on defeating each other militarily. That is um, a perception that I, I, I continue to hold. And I'm saying that one of the things we could do is to change that thinking, that approach um, for all people in positions of leadership to be talking peace. Now, as JMEX, of course, you've been involved so much with these two groups, as you call all leaders uh, with positions to be talking peace. Now, what happens now? Because the, the president and the first vice president are talking peace here, but there seems some group that are not loyal to them. In order to achieve total peace in precisely, the country, precisely. how to go about that? I am saying that the president and first vice president and the, the, pres and the vice president should go out of their way and offer a hand of friendship to those who are fighting. Invite them to stop fighting. Tell them that, okay, we have fought, um, but now, and we have destroyed our nation. Now we should stop fighting and join us. We will not, we'll, he, he should offer. Honesty. I gave an example of what the president has done mm -hmm. recently, which I which I value, which I think is good. When he offered honesty to the 600 I.O. soldiers who were stranded in the DRC, who mm -hmm. had fled there with, with Riek Masha. Before that, there was a group of about 25, I can't remember, it was 25 or 27, who surrendered. Uh, they were cornered by the the government soldiers and they surrendered. When that happened, the president should have taken um, the initiative to welcome them that they did the right thing by surrendering and that they are safe, they are not going to be killed, they are going to be cantoned um, with um, assistance from the international community. That's why the, 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 the president in particular he should be inviting all the I.O. people to say that they should lay down their arms, that they will not be prosecuted if they lay down their arms now and surrender. They would not be ill-treated. They must be assured of that. Hmm. Let's talk of some but of the however, progress. But yes. However, I'm saying that it's not only the president. It must be all the leaders. I mean, for instance, the, the ministers and members of the government and members of parliament from Equatoria, they also sh should make appeal to their pe pe people, to their uh, citizens in, in the South, that even though they have legitimate grievances, mm -hmm. what, what is happening is not the way to go. They, they should report their grievances, and their grievances will be attended to. Sometimes people do that because they feel the, those in power don't care, and therefore they take the law into their, in, into their hands. The, the people in power should show, should demonstrate by going out and speaking and addressing the rest of the population about the need to peace, about the awareness the people are suffering. What are some of the most tangible progress that you have made so far as JAMEX? You know, when we started, the I.O., all the I.O. were out. 
So we were able to, to form a JMEC uh, together with uh, representatives of the civil society organizations. Uh, you know, in JMEC, there were three groups. SPLM, the government, SPLM, the opposition, SPLM, the, the former detainees, and then the other political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, of these four groups, only the I.O. W was in town. Uh, the I.O., I mean, only, only the, the government, the was, government in was in town. I.O. was out, former detainees were out, and other political parties, people like Lamoko, they were out. Mm -hmm. What did we achieve? We were able to start the peace because we were able to make arrangements with the help of the international community and, and with the agreement of the government to bring in first the former detainees, then the I.O. representatives led by the current first vice president and ultimately Riek Masha himself in April and a number of I.O. people <coughs> uh, from Pagak, from Kadak, and from out from the, the region and we were able to start peace that's why the government of nation and unity was able to be formed mm -hmm. that is before the disastrous events of uh, july of of, of july mm -hmm. and we were now talking about steps that ought to be taken uh, specified in the case we were we had started for instance we had brought in we started the training of the police but when the fighting took place, of course, the uh, things fell apart. Mm -hmm. What has now happened, the modest pro progress I'm talking about, we now have 850 people, uh, 20, more than 25% of whom are women, who are ready for training as police. Mm -hmm. A country, a normal country, must have police, so that when you go around, you don't expect, even if you are doing wrong, you should be arrested by <laughs> the police, not a country. Yeah, not be uh, confronted by, by soldiers. By, by soldiers. Mm -hmm. That's some progress. The fact that <coughs> the <coughs> project of uh, integrated po joint integrated police is, is taking place. The training is about to start. That's a help thing. Mm -hmm. Then the rejoined military ceasefire commission. It had been dysfunctioning. Now it's functioning again. However, we admit that Instead of being the whole of the I.O. taking part or being represented in the Joint uh, Military Ceasefire Commission, it's only a faction of the I.O. That is regrettable. That is why it is necessary to continue to work to persuade them to lay down their arms and come and take part in the peace agreement. All right. There is the <coughs> strategic and defense Strategic defense and um, um, some, uh, and security. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 not CDSM. Mm -hmm. SDSR. Mm -hmm. That's that the strategic defense and security board. It's, again, it has started. A, a, a chairman has been appointed, and they are working. But again, we are aware that they are working with those IO who are loyal to the first vice president. Tabande. Yes. Tabande. It's good, but not enough. We are interested in those who are remaining outside. Mm -hmm. We are interested, our problem now, our challenge now, is convincing the followers of Riek Masha that whether Riek Masha is back or not, they have the right to leave. And they also have a duty to take part in peacemaking here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the progress we are making. That these institutions were beginning to build them, but we admit that they are not yet as inclusive as we would like. But we we can't wait and say we will only work when they are totally, totally, fully inclusive. Yes, talking about that. Yes, as you talk about inclusivity in the, of course, uh, implementation process of the peace agreement. What, what and is it's not only the peace agreement. Yes, we are interested in peacemaking. Peacemaking agreement in the or no agreement. Okay, great. Yes, talking about that. What is the faith of Dr. Riek Machar and his soldiers? I don't know. Well, when you say his soldiers, those soldiers in the country, 
those are the people I'm saying that we should woo. Mm. We should uh, talk to them and appeal to them to lay down their arms to stop fighting and that they will be received with open hands as South Sudanese. The international community is ready to help, provided the fighting stop. All right, if you just join us, you're listening to the program Miraya Breakfast Show with me, Sebit William. This morning here in the program Miraya Breakfast Show, we're honored to be hosting the former president of Botswana, who is now the chairperson of the Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission. You did mention about some progress, of course, being made in the implementation process, now particularly on the security agreement or the security arrangements. I mean, yes. what progress has been made so far? No, I'm saying that the... the The security institutions, the Joint Military Ceasefire Commission, is now working again. The Strategic Defense and Security Mechanism Board is now working again. CITISM is a wing of, of JMAC. Yes. Their duty is to go around where there is fighting. And monitor. To monitor. Mm -hmm. Up to now, they have not been allowed to do so. I'm afraid that has been the case. But the government has now given an undertaking that they will ensure that citizens will be al allowed to move around to verify what is happening so that they can point out whether it is the government which has taken the offensive or the opposition. Or, as we now realize, that sometimes this fighting is not between the government and, and, and the opposition, but about other groups. But of course we are interested in those other groups, because they are also South Sudanese citizens. And if they are fighting, they have grievances of their own. Mm -hmm. It's not as if I owe and the government are the only South Sudanese, and therefore we worry about those. Mm -hmm. But okay. also, mm -hmm. um, there is co the question of people's lives have been disrupted. We are anxious that deliveries of humanitarian supplies should not be interfered with. And humanitarian workers uh, who tend to be killed and captured, that should stop. So to the extent that some of it is still happening, that means that the peace is taking place more slowly than we would like. Great. Now let's see, moving forward from here, how best do you think the transitional government of national unity can be supported to move this peace agreement forward? The, the, they say God helps those who help themselves. If the government of national unity sits here in Juba and sends out its soldiers to fight those who are fighting them, that's, 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 not, that's not very helpful. I'm saying that the government must go out and engage the people and ask them for reconciliation, for peace, not just sit in Juba and keep quiet and only announce the fighting all over the place. Great. You, you've been in the peacemaking for quite some time. You have vast experience in leadership. Now, for the people of South Sudan, they've been earning for peace, God knows for how long now. When do you think, with all your experience, South Sudanese people will eventually smile and believe that there's total peace hope. in their country? I, there is no way I can predict when it will happen, but I can only hope that it will happen. Dr. The, Fester, the government, yes. The government has come up with a revised program and we are going, all of us, try to implement the revised program. All right, Dr. Fester, just before you go, what will be your final remarks to the people listening to us and your message to the leadership of South Sudan? I'd say that in spite of everything, I still believe that total peace is possible. It only takes the determination by the nation as a whole, leaders and followers alike. The international community and the region to continue, we shouldn't give up on, on peacemaking. But it, it can happen. I, I hope that it will happen. Yes, been an honor hosting you here in Mirai Breakfast, so we really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, and that is the former president of Botswana, now the chairperson of the uh, GEMEX, uh, Joint Monitoring and Evaluation Commission, talking to us this morning here in the program, Mirai Breakfast Show with me, Sabit William. Good morning.
Spread the word.